What's up everyone, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cube. And today we're gonna to take a look at how do I get that embed token when I wanna embed reports and dashboards and whatnot for non-Power BI users. So this is more of the ISV type scenario where I'm going through one account and I wanna use it for every user in my application. I need an embed token to do that. We're gonna look at how to get it. That's coming up. Daniel Bartley sent me a tweet basically saying, look, I know how to get the report ID, but how do I get the embed token that I can use inside of the JavaScript embed sample that we have for you to try out embedding? It's a great question. I actually get this quite a bit in terms of not quite sure how to get that embed token. So what I wanna do is walk through actually how to do this. There's gonna be a little bit of code that we need to look at because we have to use the Power BI APIs in order to get that embed token. The magic behind this is the Generate Token API. I will have a link down in the description below directly to that API reference. We're gonna use Generate Token based on whether we're doing a report, a dashboard, or a tile. So you need to be certain about what you're actually doing. The examples that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna use the .NET SDK, but you can just as well call the REST API directly to get these items. The .NET SDK is great because it kind of wraps all the, the heavy work that I need to do to make the call, and it makes it a little easier to see in terms of explanation. So with that, let's jump into my computer. So what I've got is an application that I just wrote up. It's a console app that's just making use of the API calls just to get that embed token to show you how to get it. And then we can use that inside of the JavaScript embed sample itself. So where we wanna start off first is we need to register an app with Azure Active Directory. That's the first thing you have to do because we need a client ID for that application that we registered. There's two ways you can go about doing this. One is we can actually do that through dev.powerbi.com slash apps. And inside of that, you will have an opportunity you need to sign in and then you can give provide some information and then go ahead and set your permissions and register the application. It'll give you the client ID as part of that. The other option you have is you can do it directly inside of Azure Active Directory, inside of the Azure portal. You can just add a new app registration and you'll get the application ID will actually be the client ID for that application. I will link down below in the description a document that will walk you through exactly what you need to do to register the app and along with the links to where to go to actually do this. I'm not gonna walk through that in this video uh, because that could be a whole different video all in itself, but just know that you have to register your application in order to do this. Let's jump into the actual application and look at some code. So the first thing you're gonna see here that I'm doing is I need to create a user password credential object, which includes my username and password. You can see my username here. So that's my actual account that I'm gonna be signing in with. That's part of my Power BI tenant. And then you'll see here also the password. I've got that in a separate thing, so you're not gonna see it in the code. My password's hidden, as well as my client ID is hidden. So, okay, I've got that credential. Then what I'm gonna do is call this at authorize wait object. So if we go down to authorize, this is actually what's authenticating into Azure Active Directory. I actually grabbed this from the embed sample that we have that's referenced in our documentation. So this is the app owns data sample and you can just pull the code directly out of that. That's actually how I made this application. This method is going to call in and we're actually gonna go get a access token from Azure Active Directory. So that's gonna be based off the resource URL, the client ID from the app that we registered and the given credential. And that's gonna give me back this authentication result, which in turn is gonna give us the access token. And then we're gonna pump that into a token credential object. And that's what gets returned uh, from this item. So I'm actually stuffing that into a global. Okay, once we have that token credential, we can go ahead, this is our access token from Azure Active Directory. We can go ahead and create our Power BI client. So I'm doing, I'm creating a new Power BI client object. This is from the .NET SDK for Power BI. And I'm passing in the app URL, which is our api.powerbi.com. And I'm passing in the access token that I get. So this is basically what's authenticating me, saying that I've already authenticated to Azure Active Directory and I can make use of the REST APIs. So when I call the REST APIs, I'm using the access token from Azure Active Directory. Then after that, you can see we actually go and get our embed token. So this is actually how we do it. We can call client.reports.generate token in group. So I'm doing this because the report I'm going after is in an actual 
app workspace or a group. And so for the methods inside of the .NET SDK, you're gonna have it for either a group or it's not gonna be in a group. So if I wasn't in a group, I could just call generate token off of reports and do that. One thing to be aware of is that if you're actually embedding with an embed token, you have to do it in a group. So make sure that you're using the in-group functions when you're making this call. And this generate token method is actually calling the generate token API that's part of the REST API. And again, in the description below, I'm gonna have a link directly to that generate token API. So you can go and take a look at it if you wanna call the APIs directly from a REST API perspective. And what I need to pass into this generate token and group is I need to pass in the group ID, which I have defined up here. To get your group ID, we can go to Power BI. I'm in my sales group, that's the group I want. And I can just go ahead and grab the GUID off of the URL. That's my group ID. So that's how you can get that ID. Let's go back here. The next thing I want is my report ID. So this is the actual ID of the report that I'm gonna go get. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually call the APIs to get a list of reports. So I'm actually doing that down here in output reports. When you do that, you can copy, you can get the GUID that way. The other thing you can do if you just want a quick test is we can go back to our, uh, into Power BI itself and off of the URL. Again, I've got the report ID and the URL. I can just grab that and stuff that in. So it's easy to get the report ID. Okay, then the next thing we need to do is we need to pass in the generate token request. And so access level, I'm passing in view. You can see what these values will be in the API reference itself. So if I wanted to create a new report, I would do access level of create instead of view. And then the data set is the data set that's bound to the report. This is a little trickier to get. When you call the get reports method, you'll actually get a list, or if you get that individual report, you'll actually get the, you can get the data set ID from that. And I'll show you that in a second. So this is going to generate my embed token for me. So that comes back into my embed token object. Then at this point, I'm going to get a given report. This is gonna, this is really just how I'm actually I'm getting this individual report just so I can get some of the metadata to show you around that. Then I'm gonna output some embed token items. So in here, I'm gonna output the report ID. I'm gonna output the report embed URL. Then I'm gonna also output the expiration of the embed token that comes with the embed token object. And then lastly, I'm gonna actually output the embed token itself. So if we go ahead and run this, build it, make sure it's up to date. Okay, so this outputs a ton of stuff. Okay, then we will see all the stuff that I said we were gonna output. We've got the ID, we've got the embed URL, we've got the expiration, and we've got the token itself. So going back to the uh, comment I made about the data set with the reports. So when I listed out the reports, I've got the data set along with it. So that's how I got the data set ID. Uh, we can just plug that into the embed token call. So that's how you can go get that. So now going back to the original question of, well, hey, I wanna use the embed sample, the JavaScript embed sample, and I wanna plug these items in. I need, the I need a couple of things to do that. So if we go to the embed, I need the embed token, I need the embed URL, and I need the report ID. I'm gonna choose view mode. Remember, we've got view, edit, and create. Those are those access levels that you need. And so if I go back to my app, let's just go and plug these things in. So this is our report ID. This is our embed URL. And then this is our token. And then I'm just gonna paste that into the embed token itself. And then I'm gonna hit run. And boom, there's our report, the test scorecard. Okay, so that's how we actually can get our embed token. You have to call the APIs to actually get the embed token itself. It's not as straightforward as getting the report ID, but that's how you would do it. A couple things to remember about this is that you need to generate an embed token for each item you're gonna actually embed. So if I'm embedding report A, I need to create an embed token for report A. If I'm then going to embed dashboard A, I need to generate an embed token for dashboard A. So even though you need to create these embed tokens for each item, you can potentially cache 
those tokens for use at later times so that we're not calling back into the Power BI APIs every time we want a, a user goes to view the report. So if they're viewing, if you have multiple users viewing the same report, we only need that one embed token for that one report. And you can look at the expiration date to gauge when do I need to refresh it. And I'll actually have a separate video on how to refresh your embed token. That's gonna be coming up, so stay tuned on that one. All right, let me know down in the comments below what you think is this what you thought you would have to do to get the embed token? Maybe you didn't even know what to do. Let me know. And if you have any other questions about how to do this, be sure to put that down in the comments below as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know. Smash it if you so desire. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more great content from both Patrick and myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.